everybody. Welcome back to uh, 21 Days of Fasting and Prayer. We are in our second week, day eight. And I want to jump into the word with you. I hope that you've been fasting with us. If you haven't, it's time to jump in, press in, don't hold back, don't give up. Maybe if you started fasting and you started then eating while you're supposed to be fasting, okay, start again, right? Just get going again. Hey, in Isaiah chapter 58, I started reading this to you the last time I was on the video with you, but I want to highlight a couple other things because uh, number one, when we fast, it's not just a good idea. It's actually something that God has uh, already desired for us. And so he said this in verse six of Isaiah 58, is this not the fast that I have chosen? So that means that God was thinking about it and he intended for us to fast. And not only did he intend for us to fast and still does, by the way, even in the New Testament, we should be fasting. <laughs> this isn't something that passed away. Jesus took fasting to the cross and now we just uh, feast all the time. Uh, feasting, feasting and playing as opposed to fasting and praying. 21 days of that. No, we don't do that. Uh, the scripture tells us that God actually chose a fast. So there are fasts that people can do that are not the kind of fast that God wants. But when we fast, we want the kind of impact or effect that uh, God is after. And so he lays this out in Isaiah chapter 58. Some of those things that he's after in, in our lives is to free us from bondage, to free us from uh, ungodly partnerships and control from others, to lift our burdens. All of this is in verse 6 and to set people free who are oppressed. So when you fast, those things should be happening in your life and through your life. But it doesn't uh, stop there. He says, hey, be generous. Be a giver. Go help those who are uh, without. Feed those who are hungry. So I'm hungry because I'm fasting. But he doesn't say go feed fasting people. He goes, he says, go and feed some people who don't have the resources. So God wants to bless you to be a blessing to other people. And when you're fasting, you're not using those resources for food. You're using those resources to bless other people. So what we should do while we're fasting is identify what do I have that I can give. And then he says this, that we clothe the naked, we bring to our house those who are outcast. Maybe there are people that you know who have been rejected. They've been marginalized. They've been pushed to the side. They've been overlooked. And during your fast, it's a time to intentionally go after them and to bring them into your world. Don't just go into their world, but bring them into your world. Show them that you care. Make a place for them. Let them know they belong. That could be completely like someone off the street. Or it could be just be someone you know who's been excluded. Uh, but, but take the initiative for it. That's the kind of fast that God is after. And he said, when you do those things, your light is going to break forth like the morning. I mean, I've got the sun in my face right now through my office window. The light is shining on, on me. There's something about when we fast that our light shines uh, before us and other can, others can see it as well. And Jesus said, uh, when you let your light so shine, you do your works that your light so shines before men, people will glorify your Father in heaven. So as you're fasting and doing what God has called you to do and getting free from the things he's called you to get free from, then people are going to see that and they're going to glorify your Father in heaven. He said this, your healing will spring forth speedily. We should contend for healing in our bodies in our souls, in our spirits, when we are fasting. God is saying, this is what I'm after in fasting. I want to see you healed. Can you imagine that? God has set up a plan and process to get our healing to us quickly, not delayed, not 20 years, not 30 years from now, not someday he's going to heal me in the great by and by. No, speedily, right away. He's saying, I want to bring healing to you. Some of you are going to experience healing in these next 14 days left from the fasting and prayer. And he said this, that your righteousness will go before you. God will, his glory will be your rear guard and you'll call on the Lord and he's going to answer. You're going to cry out and say, here I am. I don't know about you, but one of my primary uh, reasons for fasting is that verse right there is that I want to cry out to God and hear him say, here I am. I want the presence of the Lord in my life. I don't have these big goals for my fast. I don't, I don't have these numbers associated with my fast. I want to get myself before the Lord so that I have the clarity to hear his voice and I can get guidance from him. I will know what to do. He can tell me what to do. I don't need to have these big lofty goals. I need to know what God is saying and I need to do that. Uh, in fact, he tells us this 
in verse 11, he said, the Lord will guide you continually. The Lord will give us guidance when we fast. Another thing that he says he'll do when we're fasting, he said, he, our darkness is going to be as the, do, the noonday. God is going to uh, lift up that heaviness, that depression that's upon you when you're fasting. This is something he does. But before he does that, he says, you got to deal with some stuff in your own heart. And there's a big thing right here in verse 9 that he says you've got to deal with. He said, you, if you take away the yoke from your midst and the pointing of the finger and speaking wi wickedness, stop blaming others during your fast and after your fast. Go deep on the inside and say, why do I blame other people? Why am I always pointing the finger? Why am I criticizing, complaining? Why don't I take responsibility for the situation I'm in? Sure, some things were done to me. Some things were done around me. There's some things out there that I'm not in control over. I'm not involved in those decisions. I think they were lousy, whatever it is. But God says, stop the pointing of the finger. When you're fasting, he's bringing stuff up that's on the inside of us. That he says, I want to deal with this. And criticism, complaining, undermining, that type of thing right there is going to actually undermine you. And that will cause you to uh you that'll cause you to stay in bondage it's going to cause you to miss out on the blessings of god you're not going to experience the guidance of the lord the presence of the lord the freedom the healing because there's a pointing of the finger and a speaking of wickedness so sometimes that's speaking of wickedness wickedness is that coarse joking sometimes it's just the dirty mouth sometimes it's the speaking words of unbelief or speaking words that con uh, contradict or they're contrary to what God says. And that's wickedness. And I don't just mean like, hey, we're, oh, bless the Lord, bless the Lord. I don't mean that. I mean, what does God say? I am going to intentionally bring my words into alignment with what God says. And my faith is going to be released through that. When we put that away, then we start to get the guidance that comes from the Lord. So I hope that encourages you today. Again, if you haven't started fasting, start fasting. If this is encouraging to you, Share it with somebody. Subscribe. I want to hear your stories. What is God doing in your life? What kind of breakthrough are you experiencing? How is he showing uh, himself strong on your behalf? What is he speaking to you? At the gathering place, we read our Bibles every day. What are you getting out of the book of John right now? How is he ministering to you? What kind of uh, insights are you, are you getting? Wisdom, guidance, all that stuff. I want to hear about it. I love testimonies and I want to rejoice with you. If there's anything that we can do to pray with you as well and those testimonies to see them come about faster, let us know. We'll be back with you tomorrow. God bless you.